So for the life of me, I have no idea why they excluded Ku from being one of the raid up servants for Guda Guda 3. Like he's always a part of the Guda Guda events. So I have no idea why for this one specifically, they're like, ah, we don't really need Ku. I, I get their story reasons, right? But I mean, just throw him on raid up. Just make him a bonus servant. Why, why like just, why do him dirty like that, right? Give him the raid up treatment. Give him the bonus damage in the event. Is he too good? Is that why we're not giving him the bonus? I don't know. But out of respect for my boy, coup who's always in these events, I'm gonna go ahead and cover him. But before we begin, if you enjoy daily FGO content, consider giving your boy that like and subscribe. It really does go a long way to help support the channel. And if you really wanna go that extra mile to further support the channel and get access to some little emojis and other little channel perks, you can become a member by clicking that join button. But enough shilling, let's talk about our boy Ku, probably one of the better servants in the entire game, and that is no cap whatsoever. Ku has an insane reputation for being able to basically solo damn near anything in the entire game and sure he goes like a long way if you do Graylum to level 100 he becomes like just nigh unkillable but he's still very very solid even at level 70 with no grails whatsoever and you might not get that impression if you look at his hits if you look at his hits you're like this guy is stinky dude like what are these hits two on the two quick cards with only 12 percent star gen two on the one arts cards with one percent np charge per attack and then three hits on the extra attack i'm not gonna lie to you guys these are some pretty poo poo stinky hits this is not necessarily what i would call a supreme deck but thankfully for ku he doesn't really care about his deck what ku cares about is living and that's what his deck is just tailored for him to do so even though you look at his deck and you're just like there's nothing super substantial going on here every it's all just very mid or just bad blatantly the skills that ku has more than makes up for his mediocre deck so starting off with his first skill now right now on the global version of the game or na whatever you want to call it this is simply just a one-time guts that lasts five turns gives him a nice 2500 hp that's fine on a seven turn cooldown but this actually gets buffed during the fifth year anniversary when Castoria comes around. It's around that time when it gets buffed. And it actually just gives him attack based on his own HP remaining. So basically he gets the Hijikata mechanic where the lower his HP is, the more damage he does. They also slapped a six turn cooldown on this instead of a seven turn cooldown as if Ku needed an easier time getting his guts back and getting his survivability back. But this is also now Ku's main damage skill as well. And his damage can get really, really good if you get him to like one HP, which is kind of hard to do because his guts doesn't bring him down to 1 HP it brings him to 2500 but you guys get what I'm saying that if he's at low HP this coup can actually start doing some damage as if he wasn't already doing decent damage already and this is already just setting a very good precedent for coup because now with this buff it makes his guts more consistent so therefore survivability is a lot easier and it also lets him do more damage which does actually help his survivability because there might be some runs where if you just had a little bit more damage you might have secured the kill on the enemy but now you do have that extra bit of damage and might be able to start securing kills that you would not have normally gotten. So this is a very, very good upgrade to his first skill. His second skill is super infamous. Basically, you get three hits of evasion that never go away. So if you're in the battle for 90 turns and Ku never gets tagged, these evasions will stick to him like glue. They're never going away until he gets hit, which that is supremely good. Let's also remember that it's on a five turn cooldown. And if you're doing a solo quest or something, the enemies can only attack like say three times. So this is basically like saying I get a whole free turn. But if you're really lucky and the enemy starts wasting their time on like using skills and all these other like things, right? They just like pop like two or three skills. Then you might make this last one, two, three turns, you know, right? And that's only if you're solo. You can make it last a lot longer if you have people like, say, George and Leonidas on like turns one and two acting as taunts. You can really just pop the skill immediately and have them take the first few hits and that lets Ku hit, like let his uh, cooldown burn down so he can get his dodges back faster. Overall, it's like really, really solid. They also give him the 16% defense for three turns in case you run out of evasions. This is the one time that I actually would prefer the defense over the crit damage because I would rather my Ku have a bad about 20% defense right and take one fifth of the hits right or one fifth of the damage from each hit then getting like 20 percent or 30 percent crit damage i really wouldn't care about that on a survival servant like ku 
And so I think the defense actually in this skill and on this kit is really, really good. And then finally, they give Ku a heal that also cleanses all debuffs on a five turn cooldown. And the heal is somewhat respectable. It's 1500. It's not super big, but it's not bad by any means. And really, this just means that nothing can really stop Ku outside of maybe a stun or a charm or like that new Abigail like sleep status. But even that status is kind of bad because then if the, she hits Ku, he just wakes back up. But I guess this is where master skills come in because Ku can pretty much take care of anything outside of something that's actually just going to a mobilize him and that's when he used like the atlas code to clear off his debuff and you know let him run wild again so overall ku very survivability like tanky servant he's not gonna die he's got the dodges to take no damage if he's out of dodges he has a guts to revive himself and then if he ever gets status or like they start lowering his defense a lot or they're neutering his damage he can cleanse those debuffs and give some uh himself a minor heal but then there's his np and his np is actually really really good it kind of does help fix his damage issue or i don't want to say damage issue but lack of damage buffs right because until we get the buff on na he only is going to be having this reducing defense thing that he has on his np which is fine it lasts for three turns it's only 10 to 30 percent though but it is buffing your damage and you should be able to take advantage of it if you're soloing and the enemy has decent hits because if you don't know the number of times that the enemy hits you depends on how much np you can gen back so if the enemy hits you like with their quick card and has like seven hits on it that's seven hits you're taking and that's like seven different ticks of np you're getting back whereas if they use like a buster card and their buster card only has one hit you're just getting hit really hard and then you're not getting much np back but since ku is a solo servant he's going to be taking all of the hits and should be genning his np very well off of np damage per attack right so on a good situation you should be able to take advantage of this at least once and be able to hit them with their 10 to 30 percent defense down you might feasibly be able to get overcharged as well depending on how much the enemy's hitting you because if they just light you up or something they might get you up to like 200 percent if you're like patient or something he has a small chance to insta kill we don't really care about that what i think is really good on his np is that he has just built in ignoring evasion considering that a lot of bosses and most servants do have some like dodge capability so ku having the ability to just innately say no nah, i'm not gonna deal with that i'm just putting that on my np and then it lasts for the whole turn as well so all of your subsequent hits will also be able to tag the enemy i think that's very very good especially because he's clearly built for challenge quest this is a servant that they were like okay free to play players we're gonna give you ku he's a three star very easy to acquire I don't want to hear any complaining that you can't beat this quest because we're giving you this very, very solid survivalist. And everybody that's ever used Ku, they, they've never had to complain about him because he's just that good. He's super, super solid. The only person that probably does his job better than him is Ku Alter, and that's just because he's a five star, he's a berserker. And so while he might not have as much survivability because he does have one less dodge, he does such an overwhelming amount of damage that he kind of makes up for the lack of survivability. So he just kills things faster while still pretty much getting the same results with survivability whereas ku does need more survivability because he's a three star and has lower stats but then if you grail him to level 100 then he just kind of becomes an unstoppable monster there's the channel hanako green that i'm sure a lot of you guys know about where ku is like his bread and butter servant that's like his baby and he's taken him against like almost impossible possible odds right and has basically soloed any difficult boss in the game with ku like if it's a boss it's probably been soloed with ku it's really amazing i advise you to go check it out if you haven't seen this guy's channel but you'll literally be seeing it sitting there like there's no way ku can solo this and then ku solos the the actual boss it's crazy so if you're a free to play player and you're like struggling or you just started your account make sure you level up your ku all of the three stars that i'm covering right now i'm trying to cover the ones that are the main ones that i'm like i think people really should level these people up because they're really going to help you out because medusa is a very solid farmer she's also going to be very good for farming qp as a newer player that's something you're going to need Medea is going to be very good at just chunking bosses because she's easily spamming her np and then ku is going to be like a main boss killing servant he's similar to someone like heracles where you can just like build a team to fight the boss but then chuck ku or heracles in the back 
as insurance so that if everybody dies, they can at least come in and buy you like three, four turns and maybe kill the boss for you by themselves, which I know I've had to do a few times for challenge quests because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna replay it like 50, 100 times. If I'm already in the run and I already got the boss down, then I'm just chucking my boy Heracles in the back and he's gonna mop up anything if I just messed up or got bad RNG. And that's kind of what they're there for. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Leave a like and subscribe. It really does help your boy out. We're really close to 2K and that's, you know, one fifth of the way to 10K. So I'm getting real hyped over here. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace. Late, guys.